أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه رب شرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Welcome my dear sisters to your class I ask Allah to benefit us with the hadith of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم and truly to make us among those who love him practically, not just emotionally, by studying his hadith and following his sunnah. Ami. Any question before we start? Anyone has question? General question. Something happened, you want to verify. Somebody asked you a question, you debated with someone. Sheikh Hamida here, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. I have a question. Yeah, uh, when I'm on Musafir, yes, in in a car. So okay. when I want to do salat, uh, salat walk to uh, Maghrib, for instance. Okay. I'm sitting in the car in the uh, in the passenger seat. Okay. Okay. Let's say I, I want to perform my my uh, salat Maghrib. Can I just sit there? Uh, uh, my kiblat is the direction of the car moving forward. Mm, very good. It depends what are you, where are you traveling? If it's in, in the town, in the city you live in, no. You have to find the qibla and pray. But I see. yeah, if you are traveling towards a destination uh -huh. like Malacca, like uh, Johor, like um, Perlis, mm -hmm. That's fine. But you, if okay. you are in the city where you live in or where you arrived, for example, see. you uh -huh. are in KL or you are in Malacca, since let's say you travel between these two three cities. Yeah. If you are yeah. in KL or Malacca, you must actually stop and look for a musalla. But because if it is a gem, that, uh, it's a gem, actually, it's a very bad gem. Yeah, if, if you are caught in traffic jam, that's different. Uh. Ah. But if you can pull out, because in, okay. in necessity, God forbid, let's say we, we, we need the toilet. What do we do? Yeah. We have to, we stop, have to stop and go to the toilet. Same thing. Correct. Correct. Salat actually was supposed to stop, pray, mm -hmm. pray, standing, because we pray sitting only during war or fear. Okay. War or fear or health, health problem. But Alhamdulillah, I don't have. There is no war. There is no no fear, and there mm -hmm. is no fear from a lion, fear from an enemy to snipe, fear from um, something bad that may happen to you. In this case, you can pray sitting. Okay. But the sunnah okay. is to come out of the the the, the, car? the, the car, the ride, mm -hmm. the the, the, the mm -hmm. camel, pray mm -hmm. normal, and then continue. Only sunnah. If you pray sunnah, that doesn't matter. If you are praying extra, okay. for example, for example, I will stop for Maghrib in any surah, pray. If I'm in hurry, I pray my sunnah in the car. Mm -hmm. So I do Maghrib, okay. standing, praying. I leave the masjid or the surah or that uh, Petronas or Shell, whatever mm -hmm. station. I get in the mm -hmm. car and I continue praying my sunnah. Not driving. Because some sisters okay. may think, Sheikh told, I'm not saying when you are the driver. When you have a driver, then you, your husband or your driver or your daughter or son or son-in-law driving you, no problem. You can do that. So but if, if you are driving, your eyes should be on the road. <clears throat> mm. So? Okay. But, but in this case, um, there's a traffic jam. Okay. And the, Very the, bad. The, mm. the, the time... Of Maghrib is about to finish. Yes, you soon. can. In this case, you can. Darura. You can. Darura. Do Darura. I have to? Do I have to repeat the salat? No, you don't have to. I don't repeat. have to repeat. You don't have to okay. repeat. Yes. Okay. All right. You. That's okay. it. Yeah. Thanks, Jay. Um, I mean, may Allah accept. May Allah accept. Yes, sisters, go ahead. <clears throat> Anything happened lately you would like to see what the Sharia said about? Hmm. 
<clears throat> no? Okay. Where did we stop, Hadith? I, uh, sorry, sorry. Um, what okay. page, please? Everybody remind each other. What page? Zurina Fatma, you're supposed to know. Nazaria. I think Athena. the last we did page. Um, 138, is it? One four, one is it 138? 142 one Hadith 205. 142 Hadith 205. Yeah. Verify, um, please. Ten, ten yes, yes, correct. correct. Chap so today we should go to chapter 3, page okay. 143. Okay, very good. Yalla, everybody, page 143. Hadith 3, right? Chapter 3. Chapter 3. Yalla, ha. Sister Zurina, chapter 3. Bismillah. Start. Okay. Chapter 3, the book of Manses. To recite the Quran while lying in the lap of one's own menstruating wife. Hmm. 206. Narrated Aisha radiallahu an. Umar. Anha. Anha, sorry. The, okay. Anha, the Prophet Sallallahu used to lean on my lap and recite the Quran while I was in Mansus. Very good. Now pay attention to everyone. How many times I told you, you women, when you have your periods, don't say I am unclean. Don't say that. Just say I have my Mansus. Don't say I, I am, you are never unclean. Muslima is always clean. It's the Oran Kafir who are Najis. Okay? You sisters are pure women. You do ghusl, you do wudu. The period, yes, you are bleeding, but that doesn't mean you are unclean. If you are unclean, then the Prophet Sallallahu who is our best example, wouldn't have lie down on the lap of Aisha radiallahu anha, Ummul Mu'mineen, may Allah be pleased with her, knowing she has her period and he was reciting the Quran. Now imagine a lady sitting on the floor, her husband putting his head on her lap and her husband is not anyone, is the one, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa who receives the wahi. If she was unclean, Jibreel would have said, don't, stop. Stop reading Quran, don't do that, get up. She is unclean until she is clean because Allah will correct him. Allah will correct. How many times Allah corrected Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Through Jibreel alayhi wa The fact that she said, each time I used to have period, he still comes, lay down, whether I have period or not, and he recites the Quran while I'm combing his hair. What a beautiful moment of love and rahmah and mercy between husband and wife. She's lying down, he's lying down, or together, no problem. If women were unclean, Rasulullah as wouldn't read Quran. And you know what does it mean, lap? Close to the private part. He's putting his head close to her private part. Meaning if she was really not clean, he would have never done, done that. Okay? So women, Muslim women are pure. However, the Sharia of Allah, for hikmah he knows, said women shouldn't pray and shouldn't fast. That's the only two things they shouldn't do. When women have their periods, they shouldn't pray, they shouldn't fast. The Quran didn't say they should not read the Quran. The Quran didn't say they should not pay zakat. The Quran didn't say they should not give sadaqah. The Quran didn't say they should not visit someone. Visiting is ibadah, right? When you go visit someone for Allah's sake. The Quran didn't say you should not go to the graveyard. The Quran didn't say don't do hajj. The Quran, it just said these two, salat and fast. Don't add, because salat and fasting, a woman cannot do them during her period, she cannot read the Quran, she cannot touch the Mus'haf, she, but she can eat. She can eat, sometimes more than 10 men. 
الله أكبر why don't you say okay she cannot even eat يلا for one week let her die no so we cannot make sharia from our mind we just stop where Allah told us to stop okay sisters so read Quran when you have your periods don't listen to anyone Whoever tells you, tell him, give me the evidence from the Quran or from the authentic hadith that I cannot touch the Mus'haf. If he says Surah Al-Waqi'ah, tell him, Alhamdulillah, I did tafsir with Sheikh Zubair. And yesterday, most of you missed a very good class. What can I do for you? Very good class you missed. But we didn't come yet to that. Don't worry about it. About... <coughs> Thanks. Okay. So the hadith is very clear. It's in front of you. All right. Continue. One more hadith, Sister Azurina. Each one of you read your hadith. Okay. Chapter 4. Using the word nifas for menses. Hmm. 207. Narrated Um Salama, while I was lying with the Prophet وسلم, under a single woolen sheet, I got the menses. I slipped away and put on the clothes for menses. He said, Have you got nifas? That is menses. I replied, Yes. He then called me and made me lie with him under the same sheet. Allah, look at the mercy of Rasulullah. The word nifas actually means postpartum. Pay attention to this. The word nifas in Arabic means when the woman bleeds after she delivers the baby. However, the Arabs use it also for period, meaning for bleeding. When a woman bleeds from her private part, they use that word. So it's interchangeably, we the Arabs use the word nifas or haid. Haid, haid is mainly menses, the, the monthly menses. Nifas is when a woman delivers baby. But sometimes the word nifas is used for, for menses. So as the Prophet ﷺ was lying down with his wife, Ummu Salama, radiallahu anha, covered in a sheet, just, just sitting together, he felt something. He, he felt that she was uneasy. So he asked her, what is it? Is it your nifas? Of course, Jibril told him, alayhi salam. She said, yes. He said, it's okay, sit with me. He, he still wanted to give her that moment where she feels she is a wife. No sexual intercourse, just hugging. He was hugging her. She was hugging him, sleeping in one bed, covered with one blanket, sheet. It, the, the relationship between husband and wife doesn't have to be necessarily sexual. Just that moment of she feels this is his, what you call a, 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 a strong shoulder, loving chest, welcoming. I don't know what you ladies feel when you are with your husbands. But that feeling that, alhamdulillah, there is someone who looks after me, after Allah Azza wa Jalla. And give me hard time from time to time. No problem. That's part and parcel. As if you, you always give us flowers. You also give us hard time. Takbir. You know who I mean. Takbir. Saya mahu mati shahid hari ini. Di negara Algeria. You're laughing, sisters. <laughs> okay. So this is life. This is life. But look at the adab of Rasulullah. Aisha said, when he is with me, I feel I am. When he is with Ummu Salama, wow. Although she panicked, she didn't know what to do because her period came while he was with her. He said, it's okay. Don't worry. We still can hug each other you know, be together body to body. The only thing we cannot do is sexual intercourse, which is haram, major haram. You ladies never let your husbands sexually touch you, 
sexually meaning intercourse when you have your periods you know it's a major sin you know that and in imam malik's madhab he has to pay gold if the man did that to his wife he has to donate gold yes dinar he has to pay it's a ransom it's a sin that must be bought again and and repent and say to allah never do that again yeah and no woman should obey her husband too bad if he asks for those things when you have period that's it until the period is over okay very good thank you sister fatma go ahead the next two hadiths inshallah assalamu alaikum Shay. wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh so before i read i just want to get it clear once and for all um in the hadith is always mentioned prophet muhammad sallallahu will recite the quran while his wife has got menses but no uh, hadith mentioned clearly that was let's say um aisha radiyallahu and her was having her period and reciting quran okay let me give you very good very good question look at me everybody when there is no when there is tida there should be an aya or hadith it's not the other way look at me in doing things you don't need a dalil in doing things the quran will be silent on you the hadith will be silent on you in not doing something the quran will tell you don't do this the hadith will tell you don't do this so the fact that aisha was was we don't know if she was reading the quran or not we don't know you are saying we don't know who told you we don't know you are assuming we don't know if there is no the quran itself or the hadith will tell you no where is that ayah or hadith that tells you when a woman is having her period she should not read the quran that's what i'm looking for like riba like riba did allah say don't don't do riba yes Allah said don't do riba zina don't do zina shirk don't commit shirk killing don't kill right that's how that's how there should be tida or you who believe don't read quran while you have your periods there should be something like that there is none therefore the ulama said to read it's not there shouldn't be a dalil that says you can read the quran while you have period so how many can you can drink milk you can drink water you can visit the that, no then the deen will be for can allah never says do he just let you he let you for no he tells you don't because the haram is you remember this the haram otherwise the whole religion will be do 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 what do wear a blue like sheikh dark blue to teach today i'm wearing dark blue because i don't know why that be it. so for ibaha for permissibility there is no dalil for haram for prohibition there should be a dalil there should be an evidence from quran and sunnah that's my point that's my point oh, yeah thank you shay very clear shay you welcome you welcome for example sister uh, fatma if i tell you don't wear purple i have to bring the evidence that purple is not right i have to say the quran said allah said the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said but till there is no ayah or hadith purple is okay to be you see what i mean otherwise we do not think in this deen let women read the quran let women attend classes let women have tafsir when they have their periods 
The only two things they are not allowed to do is prayer and fasting until those days are over. Anything else requires hadith, requires an ayah. I hope this is clear, inshallah. Okay, go ahead. Bismillah, chapter five, fondling a menstruating wife. 208, narrated Aisha radiallahu anha, the Prophet saw salam and I used to take a bath from a single pot while we were Juno. During the menses, he used to order me to put on an izar, dress worn below the waist, and used to fondle me. While in itikaf, he used to bring his head near me and I would wash it while I used to be in my periods, menses. Here you go. In itikaf, number one, the permissibility of a man and a husband and wife to play together, even when the woman is having her period, but fondle, not sexual intercourse. Play with her. Okay. Uh, she said, even during his i'tikaf, the Prophet Sassam does i'tikaf in the masjid, he used to pull his head to her and she washes that head for him with her hands while she had period. So if she was quote unquote, look at me, look at my, the fingers, I'm a quote unquote. If she was unclean, would he touch her, uh, allow her to touch his head while he is in itikaf? No. You women, are, remember the hadith of Abu Huraira last week? Last time, last time, when I taught you in class in IQSS, when Rasulullah saw Abu Huraira changing the, from far, Abu Huraira like avoided the Prophet. The Prophet took mark of that. In the afternoon when he met him, he said, what, what happened this morning? Why you, did, why you avoided me? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I was junub. I was junub. I was sexually defiled. So I didn't want to shake hands with you. I was still looking for a place to go and do ghusl. I didn't want to, you are the prophet, you are Rasulullah, you are the nur. So I didn't want to shake hands with you while you were. The Prophet Sassim said, no, if you ever are Junub and you meet me, shake hand with me. Muslim, mu'min can never be najis. Mu'min, that includes mu'mina. Mu'min means the believer, he or she, can never be what? Najis. Please understand this. The najasa is shirk. Shirk is najis. Not a Muslim can sexually be defined. You go sleep, you have a wet dream. You play with your husband. You have sexual intercourse with your husband. That doesn't mean you are impure. You can't just pray. Go ghusl and can pray. Simple as this. For six, seven days, you don't read the Quran. Unless you don't want to read the Quran. And you're looking for the whole year to be period. Some women, they wish they have period the whole day. Just not to read the Quran. Na'udhu billah. They and the Quran don't get along. Na'udhu billah. May Allah save us. Yalla. Ha. Next hadith. 209. Narrated Abdul Rahman bin Al Aswad on the authority of his father. Aisha radiallahu anha said, whenever Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi salam, wanted to fondle any one of us during her periods, menses, he used to order her to put on an izar and start fondling her. Aisha radiallahu anha added, none of you could control his sexual desire as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, could. Sallallahu alayhi wa Yes, meaning, Although she, she narrated the hadith, but she's telling men to be careful because they are not like the Prophet. The Prophet has strong sexual control. He controlled his sexuality. So the Sunnah, look at me, sisters, 
If any man or woman want to get together while the woman is in period, she has to put something from her, from her belly button all the way to her knees. Echo. From the belly button all the way to the to the knees. That he can touch. From the belly button all the way to the knees. When a woman is having her menses or period, uh, nifas, uh, postpartum, cannot. So he can enjoy the upper part of his wife and from the knee up to the toes. You teach your daughters these things and your sons. Don't look at me like, ah, first time hearing these things. Why I'm teaching you, by the way? So that you go sleep and forget? Tell the youth. Most of you have daughters, either married or about to get married. So that they know the sharia, the, what Allah has allowed and what Allah didn't allow. Share with them this video. Tell her, come sit here, listen. Listen to this class. Recording, show her, say, listen. You're about to get married, you know, you don't even know. Al Fatiha. What type of mother are you gonna be then? Yallaha. Thank you. Very good. Uh, feel free to ask while I am talking, eh? Sister Hamida, next to Hadith. Unmute. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Chapter 6, a menstruating woman should live observing saum, that is fast. 210. Narrated Abu Sa'id al-Qudri, radiallahu anhu. Once Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, went out to the musala to offer the salat, the prayer, of it al-Adha or al-Fitri, prayer. Then he passed by the woman and said, O woman, give alms, as I have seen that the majority of the dwellers of hellfire were you women. They asked, why is it so, O Allah's messenger? He replied, you curse frequently and are ungrateful to your husbands. I have not seen anyone more deficient in intelligence and religion than you. A cautious, sensible man could be led astray by some of you. The woman asked, O Allah's messenger, what is deficient in your intelligence and religion? He said, is not the witness evidence of two women equal to the witness of one man? They replied in, in the affirmative. He said, this is the def deficiency in your intelligence. Isn't it, that, isn't it true that the woman can neither pray nor fast during her menses? The woman replied in the affirmative. He said, this is the deficiency in your religion. Mm, Allahu Akbar. Okay, the hadith, mashallah, beautiful hadith. As usual, Rasulullah Sallallahu always speaks wisely, mashallah. Uh, the hadith here has many aspects, but the one we are looking for is the fact that women cannot pray and cannot fast during the menses. That is evidence that they have half of the religion. Women, no matter what they do, when they worship Allah, they cannot match men. Why? Because few days of the month, they cannot pray. Simple as this. And that's not because they are less human. Is Allah want them to be like that. Allah wants women to take a break. For hikmah, he knows. Sisters, do you know, do you know that it's for your own good? Imagine your husband wants you 24 uh, every day, seven days a week, sexually. It's very not, not, not nice. Not nice for you. There should be a break because your womb cannot. The womb, you carry babies and you have that bleeding. So Allah gives you a break for the womb to recover for your health. Otherwise, do you know if Allah didn't give you the period by the age of 
30, you are already an old woman. You look like a super grandma. Allah Azza wa Jal gave you that so that you continue still looking, mashallah, good. So at least your husband age, ages with you. Your husband looks very young, you look very old. Of course, he has to look for others now. You understand? Somebody said, Na'udhu Billah. As if I committed shirk or kufr. Takbir. You know who. You understand now the beauty of give you break. Rest. Recuperate. Even fasting, he said, don't fast. Eat. Because you bleed. And when you bleed, it's not good. You need water. They remember when we give blood, when we donate blood, they tell us, eat quickly. They give you some juice or some, I don't know what they give you. They said, please go eat some bread. Some... Because bleeding, you lost blood. So women lose blood from their private part. And then they fast the whole day. So they see the rahmah of Allah. That is your deficiency in religion. The other way, Allah doesn't accept one woman as witness. There should be two women. Allah decided that no woman should come to court as a witness by herself. There should be two women. For example, in marriage, when we want to marry a brother and sister, we need to look for two men, Muslims, practicing Muslims, to be the witnesses. If there are none, only one man, we bring two women. So one man and two, uh, two women. We can perform the nikah. Talaq, same thing. A man wants to divorce his wife, and he says, that's it. So we bring one man, two men. If not, one man and two women. This law that Allah has made in the Quran and the Sunnah is a proof that women have deficiency in religion. Doesn't mean they are bad. The word deficiency is not the right word. But uh, Rasulullah said, women are less in intelligence and less in religion. He didn't mean they are we women are not intelligent. No, they're, they're, he, he explained what is it. Allah won't accept the testimony of one woman. There should be two women. But the Quran never said women are less intelligent than men. He never said that. The Quran, you cannot find one single ayah in the Quran where Allah says women are less intelligent than men or they can't uh, do, they are less mu'min than men, no? But in general, this is the situation of women. And you know why? You know why actually? Because of the emotion, you always put emotions first. You are, you are intelligent later. Later you are intelligent. Sometimes when you mess up everything, then you realize. But when the initial reaction to something is always emotional. Prove me wrong. All of you are emotional. Here is an evidence. Here is an evidence. Look at your reaction and the reaction of your husband, unless he is super emotional than you. I'm talking about a normal human being, husband. When your child, both of you, somebody hits him. School, school. He comes, Ma. the father will try to find out why first. What happened? You show me who's this boy. I'm gonna kill him. Ah, you start, uh, you become monkey. Like me, normal, that's, that's, that's a mother's. That's Allah put, put you like that. A father will say, what happened? Tell me, did you start for, <laughs> that's Sheikh Zubair by the way. I will always blame my children first. Did you do say anything? Did you do Another person? Who says, show me? Ah, find out first. Find out. Calm down. So that's not bad, actually. That's because without your emotions, no one sisters will get up for that child to breastfeed him, to clean him, 
that emotion, that rahma, Allah put in you. But sometimes you ladies take it out of context. Takbir. Very good. Yalla. Ask me while I'm talking. Eh? I mean. Continue the me. next one, Shay. Yeah. Don't go, let me go to Negri Simbilan and bring me back. Yalla. Yes, next hadith. Okay. Chapter read seven. Two? Hamida, Hamida, you read two? Ivan, this is the next one I'm going to read. Okay, go ahead. Chapter seven, the itikaf of a woman who is bleeding in between her periods. 211. Narrated Aisha radiallahu anha. Once one of the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam did itikaf along with him and she was getting bleeding in between her periods. She used to see the blood from her private parts and she would perhaps put a dish under her for the blood. She was doing a tikaf. If, if this woman was one of the wives of the Prophet's life, subhanAllah, look at these women. They were making a tikaf together. <laughs> women of today, they will kill each other. If a man is married to more than one, <laughs> you know World War 10, which didn't happen yet? Takbir. Allahu Akbar. Aisha said, I was with another wife of Rasulullah and I could, you know, she told her, I'm bleeding. She said, put something, but she didn't say, go home. Your etikaf is done. No more etikaf. Allahu Akbar. Yeah, Allah. Yes. I am in etikaf, but I'm bleeding. And in itikaf, what do we do? Do you know what's the major ibadah of itikaf? Is reading Quran. Do you know that or not? When people learn itikaf, you see them all with mushaf. So who taught, who taught you? Who taught you that you should not read the Quran? Raise your voice so that your sisters hear you. Is it also the hadith that is the Yes. Yes. MashaAllah, Ustaza Farida, Farina, uh, she said that this also could be the evidence that women can be in the masjid during their periods. You cannot pray and you cannot fast. Other ibadat you can do. Other ibadat you can do. So here is wife of Rasulullah, Aisha, radiallahu anha. Narrating hadith about another wife of Rasulullah, she didn't mention who she that she was bleeding, meaning she was still young. Definitely, she was not Ummu Salama, definitely, she was not uh, what's her name, Sauda binti Zum'a, radiallahu anha. They were old ladies there already. Sauda, may Allah be pleased with her. She called Aisha, sister. I know Rasulullah loves you most. Take my night. She gave her her night. She said, I'm an old woman. All I need is to be with Rasulullah in paradise. You're still young. Women of today, <laughs> if she is 110 years old, she still wants uh, her uh, night. <sighs> no comment, no comment. Okay. Yalla, sister, move liha. Next. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. I am outside here to pick my kids. Ah, Sorry, I am unable no to problem. leave. No problem. Welcome, sister. Okay. Sister Nazaria, go ahead. Nazaria also is outside? Um, uh, yes, I'm actually queuing Mashallah. to buy some Malaysian ringgit. Um, oh, you are coming to Malaysia. Most welcome. Yes, but um, you know, the Sheikh day when I. I know the day when I booked the hotel, I confirmed um, the One World Hotel, and the next day you actually flew out to Algeria. Oh, I said, oh, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry, please, sister. Yeah, inshallah, next time. Time. next time. <laughs> next time. Malaysia yeah, is yeah. Singapore very close, inshallah. Yeah, I inshallah. know. Yeah, travel on the first day of school holiday. That's why. Ah, um, yes. 
Uh, yes, and now that Malaysian Malaysian ringgit, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? The rate, the rate yeah, drop, and then like there's a long queue now all buying Malaysian ringgit. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm I'm joining the queue now, so I'm outside and I don't have it. I'm so sorry. May Allah make it easy. Me. May Allah make it easy on you, Sham. When will you be coming back? You won't be coming back soon, right? Uh, I still have to go to, to Syria to help the not Syria, the, to Turkey to help the Syrian refugees. And inshallah, a couple of days. I mean, a few days, maybe one week, less than two weeks, inshallah. One week yeah, and by days. then I'll be back. Inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah. Okay, Inshallah. always with help. Yeah, I'm you so sorry. Welcome. I think you have passed, no passed uh, to another sister to meet. Yes, I will. I will. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sister, uh, you're welcome. Sister Noor Hafiza, go ahead, please. Assalamualaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah. Uh, chapter 8. Putting perfume by women at the time of taking a bath after finishing from the menses. 212. Narrated Umm Atiyah radiallahu anha, we were forbidden to mourn for a dead person for more than three days, except in case of a husband for whom mourning was allowed for four months and ten days. During that time, we were not allowed to put coal, antimony or eye powder in our eyes or to use perfumes or to put on coloured clothes except a dress made of Anj, a kind of Yemen clothes, very coarse and rough. We were allowed to use Kus Alfar, very light perfumes, at the time of taking a bath after menses, and also we were forbidden to go with the funeral procession. Uh, how many times I told my sister, do not follow Janata? Still, some of you, I was very disappointed then the, the day sister uh, Farida, may Allah have mercy on her, a few days, two, three weeks, two weeks ago. I, these are my students that hear me every day. What is this? Then, uh, you know, sometimes I get upset, very upset. I told you don't follow Janaza. I didn't say don't go visit the grave. You don't understand sometimes. Many times I told you visit the grave but do not follow when we are going to bury someone don't come if you come stay far in the car some of you before that why don't you come now bury you 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 carry the body and bury next time if i find you i said you you too i will embarrass you why are you like that you don't listen then next time rotan from a rotan rear or stone Palestinian. Sheikh Zubair becomes Palestinian. What is this, sisters? We told you do not go to the... Don't follow Janaza. Don't follow Janaza. When we are going to bury someone, don't come. When we bury him or her and finish, please come and make dua. Is this too much to understand? My two daughters, may Allah have mercy on their mother. May Allah bless my two daughters. They wanted. They said, Baba, can we follow? I said, no, stay there. Maybe they went. Later on, that they realized, you know, emotion, they want to follow their mother. Especially that one sister, may Allah, astaghfirullah, I'm about to make dua against her. She encouraged them like, it's okay, come, come, come. You, you encourage daughters against their father. And I'm just teaching you the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu What is this? So you should not follow Janaza. That does not mean you don't visit the grave. Visit it before the Janaza or after the Janaza, but not when we are taking someone to his or her grave. That's one. The other thing, the Prophet وسلم, allowed women to have perfume after shower. After you shower, you listen, can I put some perfume? Can except for the three days of mourning. Someone died, don't put perfume for three days and don't wear nice clothes, wear just simple. Don't, somebody died and you are wearing as if you're going to a wedding. Are you out of your mind? Somebody died in the family and you're wearing like, uh, today you're gonna meet uh, Queen, uh, 
Elizabeth. It doesn't make sense. Just wear something normal. Normal. Three days. How about the woman who, who loses her husband, meaning a widow, four months and 10 days? And they were not even putting the eyeliner. Subhanallah, kuhl. So nothing to beautify yourself within the days of mourning for a husband, four months and 10 days, for a father, for a brother, for a mother, for a sister, for a student, for a sheikh, three days. Satu dua tiga. No lipsticks, no eyeliners, no nothing. Even for your own husband, no. Three days I'm mourning. We have Janaza in the family. Very good. Continue, sister. Nur Hafiza. One more hadith. Uh, sorry, no. Sheikh. So I, I didn't know that women cannot, I mean, anyone, we sisters, we cannot send anyone to any janazah for, to the grave. Excellent. For... Yes. Yes. You, you, yeah, yeah. Because you are new sister, you maybe you didn't, never heard me before. Good. Yes. That's exactly what my, I want my sister to do. No, don't follow. Na'udhu billah, even your own father, may Allah give him long life, if he's still alive. Your husband, may Allah give him long life. Your children, your own son, God forbid, if he does before you, you, you cannot go. Don't follow him. Until people bury him, her, Sheikh Zubair, bury me. Then after, after finish, you can come. You know what, alhamdulillah, one thing very nice in Algeria. Women, Janaza, forget it. To the car, to the, the van. After that, no woman. Another thing, they come the next day, not even the same day. After we bury, the family, the ladies, will be allowed to come to the grave the next day. So some, a relative will say, this is where we buried so and so. So they make dua, they put some water and they go. That's it. Very good, yes. Women in Malaysia follow Janazah. That's not right. Please don't do that. Obey the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sisters, imagine you go to Yom al Qiyamah, Allah says, you have a problem. And he said, Ya Rab, what is it? You used to follow Janazah. Ooh. And now you know I told you don't. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Sheikh. Yeah, I, I remember you told us why. Why women should not go and follow Janaza? I, but I can't remember. No. Uh, number one, because the enough that the Prophet said so. Said women should not follow. That's enough. But here is one reason. One lady fainted, fainted. W women are so emotional that sometimes they forget. They start touching us when we are buried. So... They want to come, they try to look at the grave. Sister, you're supposed to be social distancing. A, a man and a woman should have space, right? She is now. That's why next time I will catch one and throw her there and bury her and say, blah, 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 blah. I told you don't come. One day, one, and then the other one started crying. Another thing, sisters, I never forget this. During Janaza, here in Malaysia, two women started crying. The other one said to the other one, why are you crying? She said, he's my husband. He was already married to another one without knowing. Now, uh, uh, World War XI in, in the graveyard. Because you don't know who will come. So better no one come. Maybe this guy married four, nobody knows. All of them come. And she had small kids with her too. The other one was shocked, double shock. But if she stayed home, she wouldn't have known that. At least. Now should she is she making dua for him or against him? From Ya Allah, forgive him now, Ya Allah, burn him. He cheated on me. He didn't cheat on you. He married another one. 
He didn't cheat. Cheating is zina. Marrying, he married, but he was coward enough not to say. You know why? Also why, why some men don't say? Because of what you do, women. You raise hell. If you don't raise hell, a man will tell you. Men are weak already. May Allah forgive them. They are not like real men. Second, uh, if he does it, he will just say it. Then the consequences later on. So better not to come. Don't come at all. Khalas, the main reason that Rasulullah taught us not to allow women to go. And no man is a man if he allows women to come. Khalas, sisters, if Sheikh Zubair dies, don't follow me. Make dua for me. Come visit me another time. Wow, may Allah give Sheikh Zubair long life. Look at the, mashallah, the dua from my right hand side. Like beer. I mean, no, we are all going to die, my sister. Yeah. yeah, we are one day all going to go back to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is going to remain? Who? The best of Allah's creation had to go. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the worst, Fir'aun has to go. Everybody must go. May Allah just make it easy on us when time comes. Good. Continue, sister. Continue. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Chapter 9. A woman should rub her own body thoroughly during a bath after the menses. Narrated Aisha radiallahu anha, a woman asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the bath which is taken after finishing from the menses. Mm. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told her what to do and say, purify yourself with a piece of cloth scented with musk. The woman asked, how shall I Purify myself with it. He said, Subhanallah, purify yourself with it. I pull her to myself and said, Rub the place soil with blood with it. Uh, did you understand the hadith or not? Okay. Repeat, sister. Repeat. Repeat. The Prophet <laughs> was, malu, was malu to explain. He told her, Clean yourself. Let me hear the hadith one more time and then explain. Go ahead. Go ahead. Narrated Aisha radiallahu anha, a mm. woman asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam about the bath which is taken after finishing from the menses. Mm. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam told her what to do and said, purify yourself with a piece of cloth scented with musk. The woman asked, how shall I purify myself with it? He said, subhanallah, purify yourself with it. I pull her to myself and said, rub the place soiled with blood with it. Yeah, very good. Uh, Rasulullah says, Manu, shy. He is talking to a woman. He said, put on a piece of cloth, mask, mask, perfume, shh, and wrap your private part. But he couldn't say private part. He said, wrap yourself. The woman, innocently, she said, how? I don't know. Aisha pulled her and she said, this is what you do. Woman to woman. Meaning put that piece of cloth full of mask, full of perfume, and wipe your private part where the blood used to come. Now the blood has stopped. You took ghusl, put perfume in your private part, but that's what she meant. But the woman, Rasulullah says, couldn't speak like I'm, I'm speaking because Rasulullah's adab is very high. You got it or not? That's what he meant. The woman didn't know because they don't know yet. We know because Rasulullah hasn't taught us. So Aisha somehow, radiallahu anha, told her, come, we women, this is what we should do. Oh, okay, 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 faham, faham. So whenever you do ghusl, sisters, from your Juno, when you have relationship with your spouses or when you have your periods and the period is over, when you do ghusl, try to wipe your private part with something that has perfume. Preferably misc, something natural, natural, not alcoholic. Oud, rose water, I don't know what, what perfumes you have. 
and what, what perfumes you like. Just to be clean. Alhamdulillah. Faham? I hope so. Last today is Sister Sastina. The last two hadith, and I see you next, uh, inshallah, tomorrow with another. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nice to see you again. Okay. Uh, chapter 10. Bismillah. Chapter 10 The combing of the head hair by a woman on taking a bath after finishing from the menses. Mm -hmm. 214. Narrated Aisha radiallahu anhu, anha. In the last Hajj of Allah's Messenger, وسلم, I assumed the Ihram for Hajj along with Allah's Messenger. وسلم, I was one of those who attended Tamatu to perform Hajj and Umrah together with breaking and did not take the, the Hadi, animal, or sacrifice with me. I got my menses and was not clean. Till the night of Arafat, I, I said, O oh Allah's Messenger, it is the night of the day of Arafat, and I intended to perform the Hajj Tamato with Umrah. Allah's Messenger وسلم, told me to undo my head hair and comb it and to postpone the Umrah. I did the same and completed the Hajj. On the night of Al Hasba, a place outside Mecca where the pilgrims go after finishing all the ceremonies of Hajj at Mina. He, the Prophet وسلم, ordered Abdul Rahman, Aisha's brother, to take me to Al Tanir to assume the ihram for Ummah in lieu of that of Hajj at Adamato, which I had intended to perform. Alhamdulillah. Very important hadith that all Muslims need to know, which is Aisha radiallahu anha was one of the women who followed Rasulullah for Hajj. And it was check. And what an honor. Here, here, downstairs. Cover. Uh, so Aisha radiallahu anha did uh, lose her uh, ghusl meaning she had her period. So she panicked. Rasulullah, I made the niya of Umrah and Hajj, Tamatur. And I have my bleeding because she cried. The Prophet Sallallahu smiled and said, make another niya, make another intention that it should be only Hajj, not because the Umrah is gone. You cannot do tawaf. Tawaf is like salat. Can we pray? Can a woman pray when she has periods? No. Tawaf, same thing. But Hajj, he can do. Hajj is Arafah. So he said, remove your hair, open it, and then tie it up, and then make the intention and do, do Arafah. Go to Arafah and make dua. Go to Muzdalifah. Uh, go, go to Mina. Stone and cut your hair and wait until the period is over, do tawaf. And you have your hajj. Very simple. Once the period is over, you can do tawaf. So the tawaf before Arafah is called tawaf al-umrah. Pay attention. Before Arafah, if you ever go to Mecca, before Arafah and you do tawaf, that's umrah, you did umrah. The tawaf after Arafah is called ifada. That's the hajj. And she can do it after. As long as you don't miss Arafah, your hajj is perfect. If you miss Arafah, bye-bye. Even with tawaf. So tawaf of hajj comes after Arafah. So Allah Azza wa made it easy. Women who have period can go to Arafah. They cannot do tawaf around the Masjid al-Haram al-Kaaba until it is, the period is over, until the period is over. What is the problem? Our religion is very easy, very simple, straightforward. Sorry, Shay. Hmm. Uh, is there any timeline for the period to over, like after the Arafah? Like no. Like if we have menses? No. You wait. You, uh, let's say, let's say, 
and Arafah at that period came, and it took six, seven, eight days. After eight days, you do the tawaf. Inshallah. Okay. Inshallah. For example, look at me. Let's say Sheikh Zubair is a woman, and on the day of Arafah, on the mountain, when I was making dua, my period came. Shouldn't panic. Alhamdulillah, my my. Or even when I'm bleeding, blood is coming, even dripping, I keep making dua. Of course, I will try to clean and put a pad and then go back to dua, 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 dua. I go to Muzdalifah, spend the night there. In the morning, I go stone, do the jamarat, stay in the tent for a few days, two, three days in, um, in the Mina. Then I go back to Mecca to the hotel and wait until my period is over. I go do my tawaf of Ifada, Sa'i, between Safa and Marwa, then another tawaf, bye-bye, called tawaf al-wada'a, hajj. Tawaf al-wada'a is only in hajj. There is no tawaf al-wada'a in, in Umrah. And I have a fatwa. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Then I am done. Eight days, 12 days, it's okay. As you wait, share my ticket, change the ticket. My ticket, my group, my people are leaving me. Don't, don't worry. Let them leave. People will leave you anyways. Never attach yourself to people. Listen to me. I'm telling you this, my sisters. Don't attach yourself to anyone except Allah. Yeah? If you want to survive, don't attach your heart to anyone except Allah. Allah will never leave you. Humans will leave you. Your own family may leave you, your own brothers and sisters, your own spouse, your own children. But Allah will never leave you. You leave Allah. Allah will never leave you. Allah said, I will never leave those who love me. Do you know how loyal Allah is? We have no idea. Humans just, I don't know what, the small problem, bye-bye. Hasta la vista. Okay. One more hadith. Sister Sastina. Chapter 11. A woman should undo her head hair while taking the bath after finishing from her menses. Number two, hadith 215. Narrated Aisha radiallahu anha. On the first of Zulhijjah, we set out with the intention of performing Hajj. Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, Anyone who likes to assume the ihram for Umrah, he can do so. Had I not brought the hadith with me, I would have also assumed the ihram for Umrah. Some of us assumed the ihram for Umrah, while the others assumed the ihram for Hajj. I was one of those who assumed the ihram for Umrah. I got the menses and kept on menstruating until the day of Arafat and complained of that to the Prophet He told me to postpone my Ummah, undo the comb, undo and comb my head hair, and to assume the Ihram for Hajj, and I did so. On the night of Hasra, he sent my brother, Abdul Rahman bin Abdul Bakr, with me at Al-Tanun, where I assumed the Ihram for Ummah in view of the previous one. Hisham said, for that umrah, no hadith, fasting, or alms are required. MashaAllah. One thing also the Prophet Sallallahu SubhanAllah, he did not send his wife, his wife, because he had no time to go with her, without mahram, just to tan'im. Makkah to tan'im is what? 10 minutes, 15 minutes drive. Okay, 20 minutes. He sent Abdul Rahman. Abdul Rahman, take your sister. You are her mahram. Take her to Tanaim, where the masjid is now, Masjid Aisha, anha, and let her do another ihram, meaning niya and this, and then come back to Mecca to do, mashallah, the hajj. Because she lost her niya. Ni, 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 ni. She came with the niya of Umrah, Umrah and hajj. Now, since she has the period, let her go back, do another niya, and come back with the niya of hajj only. Because she can't do Umrah this year. Alhamdulillah. She was so happy that at least she saved her Hajj. 
because she came all the way from Medina. Medina, Mecca, 450 kilometers on a camel. Do you know, you know, nothing, no bone is left in you. Today we are driving in the most luxurious cars, we get tired. Ah, ladies, stop complaining. And thank Allah. May Allah bless you all. I have to go. Okay, Alhamdulillah, we learned quite the Alhamdulillah of knowledge today, especially about the permissibility to recite the Quran while during the period. Here is Hajj. You can do Hajj while you are having period, but you cannot do Tawaf. Why? Tawaf and Salat are same. Tawaf and Salat, same, same. This is why if you go to Mecca doing Tawaf around the Masjid al-Haram, as if you are praying, look at, okay, look at me, look at me. Let's say Sister Farina goes do Tawaf. Look at me, she does Tawaf, seven, huh? and Sheikh Zubair in front of the Kaaba, pray same time. I worship Allah, two rak'ahs, two rak'ahs, two rak'ahs, until she finish. My prayers and her Tawaf equal. MashaAllah. That's why pray in front of the Kaaba or do Tawaf. Don't be sitting. Talking about what? Talk later in the hotel. You are in front of the Kaaba and you're talking. In the last Umrah, they were, they were, they were talking to each other. Doing tawaf and talking, doing sai and talking. Ma, dear wife, how they get Bollywood? Ya Allah. May Allah, may Allah beautify us with knowledge. Knowledge is everything. The first ibadah in Islam is to seek knowledge, like we are doing, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you, my sisters. I have to go. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi akhirati hasana, wa qina adab al nar. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون سلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته